Well, I, I'm committed to the youth of this church, so I get out of the way. Every third Sunday, I get out of the way, and I bring in one of God's finest, youngest vessels that I can find that can speak their language, that can meet them right where they are. And this morning, you're going to be blessed to hear a word from God. Normally when he's here, he's, he's our feature artist. He's, he's our gospel rapper. But there's so much in this young man that I'm excited about that today I ask him to come and speak a word over this congregation. You're going to hear from the voice, the person, the temple, glorious foreman. Let's give God praise for him. Hallelujah. Uh, well, if you have your Bibles, um, come on, let's get right into it. Young people, today we're going to learn. We're going to learn about faith. Forget about the hype, excitement. I didn't come to entertain. We didn't come to make you feel something. Because contrary to your belief, faith has nothing to do with your feelings. As a matter of fact, what we believe has nothing to do with what we feel. As a matter of fact, you got to have faith so that you don't quit when you don't feel. Uh, if you have your Bibles, listen, the word of God is key. The word of God is key. You cannot live this walk. You cannot walk this walk. You cannot live this life as a Christian, as a believer, without the word of God. I don't care what anyone's told you. I don't care what you think you know. You cannot pass without the word. So we're going to get the word. Everybody say, we're going to get the word. Young people, y'all said it. Young people, y'all say, we're going to get the word. That's right. You're going to get the word. Hebrews 11.1. 1. It says, now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. I'm going to stop right there. Now faith. Now, faith. Anybody know what that means? Anybody? I'm, I'm going to ask y'all some questions. Y'all going to have to get with me. Anybody know what now faith means? It means now. Not tomorrow, not in a minute. It means now. Let me tell you something. When you make a decision to believe that you receive what God has for you, you have it now. You have it at the point that you make the decision to believe you have it. So if you're in school, any seniors in here? I see you. That's what's up. So the moment you make a decision to say, I believe the word of God says in Philippians 419, for my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. I need to get to college. I need money for college. The moment you decide to believe that, guess what? You have it. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for. And the assurance of, uh, of what you don't see. It's the evidence of what you don't see. So how you know you got the scholarship? How do you know you got the scholarship? Say it again. Say it again. A letter? Say you don't get the letter. How you know you got the scholarship? Say it. Now you say it. You hear it, say it. Huh? About faith. He said the whole line. You said the whole line. Online. <laughs> he said online or by faith. It, it, one of those answers was right. I'm going to let you say the right one. Say you don't have no, say, they, say they, cut, they cut off the internet. You don't have no Wi-Fi in the house. You going to unplug the modem five times. It ain't coming back on. So you can't get online. What you got? Faith. There it is. Copy that phone. Come on. By faith. The word of God says also, um, let no one despise your youth. And just because you're young doesn't mean you can't walk in the fullness of what God has for you. As a matter of fact, God specialized in calling forth young people. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, somebody by the name of Jeremiah. See, here's what happens when you know the word. You kind of walk away from, you know. Jeremiah, he was 13 years old. 13 years old when he was called. Any 13 year olds in there? You 13? Come on, stand up. Almost. Look, Pastor like, she's 13, but she's still five. Don't get it wrong. 13. So imagine being 13, almost 13, 12 and a half, you know, whatever you want to say. And God telling you, what's your name? Bethany. God says, Bethany, 
You got the juice. I'm going to give you the juice. I need for you to speak to nations. I need for you, a 12 and a half year old, almost 13 year old, to speak to the nations. That's a big, that's a big thing. You know, we don't live in a small nation. And there's plenty of them, right? How many know it takes faith to do that? Tell you a little story. So Jeremiah, Bethany, she's like, God, how am I going to do that? I don't even know too much scripture. And you want me to go speak to the nations? I only got 500 friends on Facebook. And you want me to go speak to the nation? I've got to pass school. I got school work, all this. My daddy, he preaching. I got to serve, be at church in the morning before everybody. And after everybody, how am I going to serve and speak to the nation? And Father God says, you know what? Don't The intricate details of your calling aren't for you. And could it be that sometimes, young people, we spend so much time trying to figure out how that we rarely focus on who called us and what he called us to do. See, sometimes you can get lost in how. You can sit down, Bethany. Sometimes you can get lost in how. And sometimes how is an enemy to faith. Sometimes how is an enemy to faith. So sometimes you being technical, okay, Lord, I... I I know what I'm hoping for and I know what you're calling me to do, but how am I going, how am I going to get the money to get my car? How, how am I going to get over this heartbreak? Or how can I, how, how can I move from my day to day? How, how can I do it? How can I get this person to like me? How can I renew this relationship with my parents? How can I reconcile this household? That, how can I make up for my mistake? How, 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 how? Let me tell you something. Stop worrying about how. All you need to be concerned with is who and what. And let me tell you something. When God has called you, he'll give you the faith to pursue and endure the journey of your calling. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Everybody go to uh, Hebrews 11.3. We're going to keep going, actually. So now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. This is what people back in the day were commended for. Like, man, like that's what's up. You did that. It says, by faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. Let me tell you something. I know it's a lot of talk about energy and vibe and universe and stuff like that. Listen, don't none of that stuff exists without God. God. And society is pushing. Let me tell you, I've never seen so much universe talk, energy talk. Let me tell you something. Jesus is my vibe. Jesus is my vibe. And here's the thing about vibes, ladies and gentlemen. And here's a lot of times why we can't operate in the fullness of our faith. Because we're putting our belief and our trust in things that have no foundation. So... Okay, Bob, if I base my mood and how I feel on how you approach me, and I say, man, I was cool until you, you came in here with your attitude. Now my whole mood done changed. My vibe done changed. Let me tell you something. That's not Jesus. Because we serve a God that is forever consistent. Meaning no matter how you come at me, I'm rooted and I'm grounded in love. And love don't fail. And love don't yield to you. Love actually changes you. So even if you come in with an attitude, I just walk in love and uh, before the end of the day, you're going to be smiling. Because I refuse to move. That's what faith does to you. Let's, let's, let's define faith. Let's, let's, let's really, we already defined, let's, let's talk about what faith is. What faith is, the word of God says, let me find it real quick. The word of God says that faith come by hearing and hearing what? Come on, y'all got to say this louder. Faith come by hearing and hearing what? I'm sorry, I keep my Bible on my phone. I'm, uh, I'm 23. I don't, 
I got some pages, but I keep that at the house. The word of God says, faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God, which lets me know that one sentence. Faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God, which lets me know that faith is the word of God. Let me break it down for you. Faith is the word of God. Can't have faith if you don't have no word. That's why the word of God is so important, ladies and gentlemen. Young people, don't ever get too busy not to get in your word. Don't ever get too busy for the word. Don't ever get so caught up in your own world that you never include the word of God in your world. Because if you don't include the word of God in your world, you'll find yourself flowing through your world Moving, tides moving, you moving, trends change, you change, people talking change, you change, things over here don't fall, they gonna fall, so you fall. Don't ever wake up in the morning and go throughout your world without the word of God. It is the only thing that will root you, it is the only thing that will keep you, it is the only thing that will direct you. In a world that is forever changing, the word of God is consistent. And it is your faith. Show you what I mean. Let's replace faith with the word of God. Hebrews 11. Now, the word of God is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. The word, by the word of God. We understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. But by the word of God, Abel brought God a, a better offering than Cain. By the word of God, he was commended as righteous. When God spoke well of his offering and by the word of God, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By the word of God. Here's the thing. When God calls you, he's giving you his word. When you have a call of God on your life, you have the word of God. So my faith is his word. My faith is his word. So no matter what I go through, I can go through something, lights get cut off, whatever, whatever. I still got the word of God. I still got my faith. It's cool. School. Teacher tripping. I ain't really get a good grade right there, but I believe I got his faith. His word. My faith. So I'm still good. Things didn't work out in this relationship like I really wanted it to. Bay, not bay no more. But I still got my faith because I still got his word. So whatever you're dealing with, in your world, you must have his word so that you can have faith. And faith is the substance of everything you're hoping for. It is the substance. It is the food. Matter of fact, the table out there, you know, we got the muscle man. He came from the gym. Is a year. I think he's still at the table, but you know he getting everybody right and tight. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm gonna make a stop over there. We're not after, after service. I'm coming to see you. But how many know? Even when you're working out, you gotta have substance. You have to have substance to support your actions. As a matter of fact, it takes faith to work out. Hey, I'm, t I'm, I'm telling the truth. It takes faith to work out. Because you can't physically see what you see in your mind. But you got to move and intentionally say, you know what? I'm in the gym today. I'm going to get it today. We're going to do it today. I'm going to lose something today. I can't see it. But I know, because the, the trainer told me, I got the trainer word. If I just do this for 30 minutes a day, I'm going to end up where I'm trying to end up. I got his word. 
So even when I feel like quitting and it's getting tough, and it's getting tough, I got to think about what the trainer said. The trainer said 30 minutes a day. So I'm on my second day. I got four more days to go. But what's keeping me today, right now, is the word. The word that I was given. The promise that, I, that was made to me. So I'm going to keep going until this 30 minutes is up. His word is helping me go. His word is helping me move. I'm tired, but I got to keep going. I can't stop because his word is in me. His word is in me. I'm tired, but I got to keep going. I can't stop because his word is in me. His word is in me. His word is in me. And before you know it, you get out that thing fine as one. You know, you start, you, talk, you, you say, oh, yeah. You know, gym flow, hashtag, you know what I'm saying? You, you start doing it, you know. See how important word is. And see, unlike human word and human promises, when you get a word from God, when you get a promise from God, woo, when you get a word from God, when you get a promise from God, he said in his word, I am faithful to perform it. Woo. You thinking that God is loving you and is faithful to you because of you. No, baby, you ain't, you got that much juice. God is faithful to you because his word is in you. He told Jeremiah, what do you see? Jeremiah said, I see the tree. I see these fins on the tree. They form me. Father God said, for you seen well. And just like you see on that tree, that's how I look at my word. I'm forever mindful of it. I'm forever looking at it. I'm, I'm looking at what it's doing. And you want to know why the word of God will never return unto him, boy? It's because he is chaperoning it. He's looking at it. Wherever it goes, he's looking at it. So that's why you can't fail. Because his word is in you. And that's why you can't go too far left because his word is in you. And, and, and where, whoever he puts his word in, he gives his faithfulness to. Whoever gets that word in them. If it's nothing for nothing more than saying, I got to have the word of God in me so that I can assure myself that God will Never leave me out here stranded. Because if anything, he going to leave his word. I don't know about you, he going to leave his word. You know, you know that parent who, who's like, hey, I ain't going to leave my baby. I don't care where you go, I ain't going to leave my baby. Where you going? I'm coming right here with you. You ever been in the store when you was little and your mama say, stay with me. Before you know, before you get in the store, she give you that talk. That whole briefing, don't touch nothing. <laughs> don't ask for nothing. Close your eyes, because I don't want you looking at nothing. And then she say, if you hit my back of my ankle with that buggy, two chops to the throat. Two chops to the throat. But listen. And how many know that's a promise that she is faithful to perform? <laughs> I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, young people, you live in such a time, a trying time. You live in such a trying time. I mean, what y'all have to endure, you can't afford to walk out the house without faith. I can't afford to walk out the house without the word of God. I got to say, here's the thing. You don't got to know the whole book. Faith is the word of God that you understand, that you completely rely on and depend on and trust in. I don't care if it's a fun scripture. Jesus wept. But I know why he wept. And I know what he was doing when he was weeping. And I know he was weeping for my sins and, and for me. And 
I know his cousin died, but that showed his level of compassion. But I understand that word. That's why Father God said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, I don't care what you're thinking. You can get, just get a piece of it. A piece of it. A piece of it. For example, the woman with the issue of blood. Hold on, let me see that. Let me see that girl. Let me. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. Hold your head up, girl. Let them see. Let the folks over to the right. Something like the woman with the issue of blood. And see, y'all live in a society that's it's a crowd. The world is so loud. It's so loud. From the radio to the TV to social media, everything is loud. I mean, you can't get on nothing without hearing somebody fighting, complaining, talking about somebody else, man. Or trying to steal whatever. Or it's so loud. And it's loud with the wrong things. And just like the last time I was here and the power went out, I realized I gotta shut some stuff off. It's got to shut some stuff off so you can raise the volume up on the word of God. And you've been wondering why it's been hard to keep the faith. Let me tell you something. None of this has anything to do with us. It's not by our works. It's through our faith. So stop telling yourself, I got to keep the faith. And stop telling yourself, I'm going to let the faith keep me. I'm going to let it keep me. Now unto him that is able to keep me from falling. And present me faultless before the Father. I got to let that faith keep me. So when I do mess up. And when I do make a mistake. Unintentionally and intentionally. That faith is keeping me. I'm keeping it. Because the word is keeping me. It's keeping my heart. It's keeping my mind. It's keeping me. Coming back and forth from church. It's keeping me. Stop trying to keep the faith. And let the faith keep you. I could have shot it on that. Let me tell you why. You thinking it's because of you. And you were never designed to do things in and of yourself. When God created Adam, imagine a father who said, I'm going to create you just to love you. Just to take care of you. And when Adam and Eve disobeyed and fell into sin, what they did was they fell into their own identity. And when God came and he, he called out for Adam, let me tell you something. He knew where the, the vessel was. He knew where Adam was. What God was saying, where am I? Where am I? Where's the spirit that I placed on you? Where's my spirit that was taking care of you? Where's my spirit that was on you that was preserving you? I don't see it anymore. So let me help you understand, if you allow God to be who he wants to be <coughs> in your life, you'll find that the faith, his word, will be keeping you more than you'll be keeping it. You can't keep it. The law, sin and death, that law came, you know, you can't follow the commandments. You can't do that in and of yourself. But what you can do is, once you get that word in, you can, okay, Christ, I'm in you. You and me. Start doing your thing. So uh, somebody come at me wrong, you coming for me? You know what? I ain't, I'm not going to come for you. He who's in me, which is greater than he that is in the world, is going to rise up. And see, sometimes I think, this is how I think, I think sometimes we don't do certain things according to the word because we think, that Father God is not going to bestow the punishment on the people that do us wrong that we want him to bestow on us. God is love. Get over it. He loved you and the person that offended you. Period. 
But sometimes we say, Lord, I'm going to take things into my own hands because I don't believe in your word enough that if you show up, you're going to be loving this person. And this person hurt me. And I, and I don't want them to be loved. I want them to be hurt. But then God is looking at you like, listen, the only reason they hurting you is because they ain't never been loved. So if you just believe me enough, trust me enough, have faith in me enough, whoever hurts you, let every tongue that rises up against you, I will condemn it. And let me tell you something, the way God condemns is not how we condemn. So even when he said, I will condemn that tongue, he's saying, I'm going to snatch that down and I'm going to impart into them something that will cause them never to speak another word of harm on you or anybody else they encounter. I'm, young people, get to the point where you say, it's not about me. We live in a world that is training you up to say, it's all about you. Wiz Khalifa, it's all, everything about me. Everything about, no, it's not about you, baby. I'm sorry. Somebody say, by faith. faith. Somebody say, by faith. faith. Everything we do is by faith. And sometimes you just got to leave you for God. It's a song, you know, it says, uh, for your glory, I would do anything just to see you. And when you don't, here's how Jesus becomes, and, and, and things in the word becomes cliche. When people hear or experience that person having a genuine encounter, they snatch that encounter put it on them, and they start talking and doing things that they saw that person do. They get all the emotions right, but they never get in a relationship. So how do things become cliche? It's, it's, it's simply actions and words and statements that are done and made and said without relationship. And this will not be a generation that does not know God. You all will have a relationship, a personal relationship with God. So when you say, no, 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 I'm healed. By his stripes, I'm healed. I ain't saying it's clichéic because the enemy ain't playing and he ain't clichéic. So when the doctors say, listen, you got this, the doctors ain't clichéic. They ain't telling you something just to say it. They really saying it. So you got to have enough relationship and belief in the word of God to say, no, I know who my God is. He healed me 2,000 years ago. I'm sorry, doctor, but what you're telling me now is too late because Jesus already died for me. His blood was already shed, so I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I have healing. Healing is mine. It was given to me 2,000 years ago. I, I hear what you're saying, but I just don't believe what you're saying. So because I believe what he's already said, my actions will reflect the word of God. Don't assist your doubt and your fear with your actions. Don't, here's, God has faith, the enemy has fear. Faith is the word of God. Fear is the word of the enemy. Faith requires belief. I don't care what you think, you know, two different things. Faith, word of God. Belief, fuel to your faith. Fear requires doubt. Belief, doubt. Faith, fear. Fear, faith cannot manifest any word unless they have fuel. The reason, Father God, I believe, put a mustard seed in a mountain in the same text, in the same picture, in the same bowl, is to show you the power of my word surpasses the size of your mountain. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how much hurt you're dealing with. I don't care what happened to you. I care, but the word of God in me just can't allow me to care in a way where I cater to your disposition. 
Some people just want somebody to cater to them. It ain't that you don't believe. It ain't you ain't got faith. Sometimes you just find that being this way brings more attention to you. Anybody's, if you got to, if anybody got to make you afraid for you to get them attention, I'm sorry. I can't give you my attention. Your attention costs too much. I can't do that. Things, ladies and gentlemen, the word of God. The word of God. That is what you have to allow to govern your mind, govern your life. It is our final authority. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what the judge say. I don't care what the teachers say. It is your final authority in it you believe. Give you a quick testimony and I promise you I'm good. Proverbs 3.26, for the Lord my God shall be my confidence and he will not allow my foot to be taken from up under me. Those who are in high school right now, all my seniors, you know this term, credits. I needed six of them. That's why she she's like, oh, what? But it's not that I needed six of them. It was I needed six of them in two weeks. Let me show you that I know what I'm talking about. Six credits, two weeks. We're talking credits. We ain't talking points. Credits accumulate over years. 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 I'm going to my counselors. First of all, notice this is what God said. We just moved, and the school that I believe God called me to be at was right across the street. Now, with my track record and how my behavior was, I said, Mama, I believe God is telling me to go to this school that is across the street. My mama said, the devil is a lie. <laughs> with the way you've been acting, you ain't going to no school that is within walking distance. Because how I've been acting assured her that this boy going to be at home. He going to go to breakfast and come back home. <laughs> and so, but you know what I did? I had the word of God. I had the voice of God. I knew God told me to go to this school. So I didn't, here's the thing, you don't got to defend God don't have to defend God. When God tells you to do something, and God tells you and unctions you to do something, and just because the people around you may not agree, just because they didn't hear from God, you got to let them hear from God through your actions. And there is a, a composure to faith. Faith carries a certain composure. I'm so confident in what God told me to do through my actions. I didn't go back and forth. I said, okay. Went back in my room. Okay. Proverbs 3, 26, for the Lord my God shall be my confidence and will not allow my foot to be taken up under me. All right, then I needed some more faith, some more word. Obey your mother and your father in the Lord, for this is right. Sometimes you got to remind yourself to honor and obey. You got to do that. Over time, she was like, okay, we're going to try you. you go. We're going down to the last day before registration. We had, she took me. I was like, cool. Got in. Showing you how God's divine order, the, the steps of the righteous are ordered. So we get there, first week of school, I remixed the alma mater. And now I'm, I'm, I'm performing in a pep rally before an entire school full of people I do not know. And folks looking at me like, who is this? <laughs> Special guest? What are what, what we doing? But when you are where God has called you to be, your elevation is not going to take long. I'll say it again. When you are where God called you to be, the elevation in that place is not going to take long. At all. He said he'll sit you at the tables with kings. With kings. People in decision-making position. I obtain favor with principals, counselors, faculty, staff. Everybody critical to my success, I obtain favor with. Because I moved in the word of God. Semester came and I'm feeling the pressure. Because now all the seniors are getting called out for all the festivities that seniors are supposed to do. And, you know, you can only fake for so long. Now when it's time for people to do the things that they're classified for, 
and you can't do it, you've been walking around. That's what people do even in Bible. We walk around like we seniors, like we got all the credits. And then something happened, or we have to be called to service. I ain't saying service, I mean service, serving. Then you find out who got credits and who don't. And so, long story short, I stood on the word. They told me I needed eighth, ninth, tenth period. I said, no, I'm going to graduate on time. They said, no, you're not. I said, yes, I am. Favor, God put people in my life. We knocked out them online classes. Ended up with five and a half. Three days before graduation. May 24th, I'm in the counselor's office. Now, scenes already been let out, schools out. Saying, look, I got five and a half, what I need to do. Now, here's the thing about faith. When you get it, it's not, your, the manifestation of the things you hope for ain't always going to show up in the place you think it's going to show up. Sometimes you sow it in here and it comes out of here. And so, I'm in the counselor's office, and so the counselor says, you know, I ain't never been in RTC, don't know nothing about RTC, ain't trying to be in RTC, because it ain't nothing like the Army, and they don't tell you that. So, the counselor said, well, go to, the, go, go to Colonel King, see if he, you can do some work for him. And, you know, I'm, I'm, my other form ministry is artistry and song, and so get to Colonel King and say, hey, Colonel King, I just can't you, because I need half a credit, and I'm good. He asked me one question. Now, at this moment, this is where you truly have to see where you are. He said, why are you having to come to me and ask me for work? He said, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. When, when faith is there and your confidence in faith is there, you have no problem exposing where you messed up. Because I'm so confident in what God gave me ability to do and what God told me to do. I'm so confident that he's my confidence and he won't allow me to fail that I don't mind telling you that I messed up. Because my confidence, is, it is, it's in him, not in you. He said, because you was honest, just write me a five-page essay on where you see yourself in 10 years. Now, he's telling somebody to write a five-page essay who will write in five books within a week, just songs. So to me, I'm like, Lord, you had me do all that. Just to do this one little thing that I do every day. Matter of fact, I was like, Colonel King, here go a song. I done wrote a song, a couple of them. You can say, there it is. But I got them six credits, and I was walking May 26th in the Georgia Dome, cap and gown, <laughs> on time. And no, it wasn't no certificate of attendance. It was a diploma. Because, <laughs> you know, for some of them, they still, you know, some of them that don't just quite make it, they be like, hey, baby, you can walk. But uh, thank you for coming to school. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> See you next year. But that's what people stand for your feet. I declare over your lives that you will have such a hunger for the word. For the word. So that when you are in school, and you do get to college, and you are at work, and the things around you, everything around you is trying to convince you that your God is not real. The word of God will anchor you. It will empower you. It will give you the courage just to speak the truth. And sometimes it'll just give you the courage to walk. To walk. Ladies, it'll give you the courage to hold yourself. In a world that says, hey, you want to get ahead, you got to give it up. No, no, no. I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. I walk in the confidence of my faith. And anybody that's gonna touch me is gonna be worthy to touch me because they gonna wait on me because their faith and their love with Father God will be more important than their satisfaction and gratification with me. Fellas, 
the mere fact that you are here today, standing in this room, let me tell you something. You have overcome so much already. How old are you? 16. How old are you? 18. How old are you? 18. They said that you, you ever been to jail? You ever been to jail? You ever been to jail? You got kids? You got kids? You got kids? Let me tell you something. At 16, at 18, they say that you would have a record. And it don't matter. Because you don't have a record. Even though you got a record, you don't have a record. They said you'll be in jail with a record. Three, four babies. Making your mama cry. The mere fact that you stand in this room says that you have overcome the world already. Let me tell you something, young people. God loves you. He loves you. And he's not intending to leave you to walk this walk by yourself. If you don't leave out of here with nothing else, leave out of here knowing that he is your very present help. You can't walk this walk with God without God. And guess what? He don't want you to. He don't want you lost. He don't want you confused. He don't want you hurting. He's with you. He loves you. He's for you. Put your trust in him. Because he's been the same. He was the same yesterday. Today. And he'll be the same forevermore. And I ain't saying that cliche because what he did for me in 2011, he's doing for me in 2016. He's with you. You get in that word and let that word get in you. And then you let the word do what it's supposed to do. Yes, when people come up to you talking about, why are you changing? Oh, I'm changing? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The word is doing what it's supposed to be doing. I'm changing. You can see the change. It's doing something. Why you don't hang out with us no more? Oh my God, y'all still bickering and complaining. I ain't going to be that woman, that black woman that they put on TV. It's a lot of grown children on TV. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired. I'm tired of the media portraying our race to be a bunch of complaining. Passive. Always in mess. That's not who you are. And by your example and your influence, you will influence influencers. The people you see on TV will encounter you. And they'll have a reflection like, oh my God, this child that is 16 just taught me something. Just, I'm mature, what? You have been given the power and authority of influence on your generation. I'm going to tell you this, and, I, and Pastor, let me know whenever. But they spend millions of dollars just to find out what you think, what you like. You didn't know that. The, the mansions that they live in, you pay for. So I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I'm tired of putting people in mansions that are putting me in sales. I'm tired of putting people in mansions that are putting me in hospitals. I'm tired of putting people in nice, I'm tired of putting people in nice cars and nice clothes and nice homes that are putting me in bad situations. No more. And if they can spend millions of dollars just to find out what you think and what you like, let me tell you something. The moment you say, Jesus, I like Jesus. I like to keep myself. I like to walk with confidence. 
I like to walk with my pants up or my pants just nice and clean. I like to be clean. I like to go to work. I like to do my work. I like to excel in school. I like to pass my tests. I like to do the things I'm supposed to do. I like to respect the law. The moment you say that, that you like that, the money that goes into your demise will now be placed in your destiny. Woo! That's what a global impact is. It's when I understand that I influence everything. So if I influence everything, Jesus, I'm saying Jesus. Hashtag Jesus. Now when I put God first in my bio, it ain't just because I want to look good, but it's because I really put God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. That's the word. That's the faith that I have. So when I put God first, I'm really putting God first in everything. Faith is not an accessory. It is access. Faith is, not an ex faith is not an accessory. It is access. I got access. Because this is my phone. I got access. Even if my, my finger don't work, I still know the code. I still know the code. I got access. So don't, you will not be that generation that just wears faith what point of it I ain't about to wear it if I can't use it I ain't about to buy no J's if I can't ball in them how about that you got some young man I'm gonna buy J's that represent a basketball player he played in his J's but I'm gonna buy them just to wear them The person that is on the shoe played the game with the shoes on. But you buy the shoe and you walk like this because you don't want to get no creases in it. So you're wearing it, but you're not using it. That's how some of y'all do faith. That's how some of y'all do faith or your relationship with God. I'm going to wear it, but I ain't going to walk in it. So it don't benefit you none. So it's not that it don't work. It's that you wearing it and you're not walking in it. Stop wearing it. Start walking in it. And you'll see how much it works. It was never meant to be worn. It was always meant to be walked in. It was never meant to be worn. It was always meant to be walked in. I walk by faith. I talk by faith. I live by faith. I'm not just wearing faith. I am an example, a living action of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise all over the building. Come on, I said let's give God praise all over the building. I want to thank Glorious for blessing us with such an on time and in season word. And just, I don't want to miss this opportunity, uh, Glow, because you, you, you really impacted it our young people today, and just in case I've got any students under the sound of my voice that have not surrendered their life to Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. it's a fake move. Yes. And all you got to do is submit to him by faith. Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that yeah, whosoever believes in him shall be saved. You'll have that right to eternal life, and that faith that Glow just preached about, it'll belong mm -hmm. to you this Sunday. You can have that you can exhibit that faith. Not just wear it, but walk in it. Yeah. You can do that right now. If you need to be saved, you've never been baptized, I want you to be saved on the Sunday that glorious foreman brought such an awesome word into this house. Not just for the young people, but if anybody who's under the sound of my voice, you're not saved, would you come to the altar this Sunday morning so that we can pray with you and pray for you and lead you to Christ. Would you come on this Sunday morning? If you're not saved, come and be saved. Come and make this year really the sweetest year of your life. You can do that today. Why don't you come if you're not saved? 
Well, let's give God praise for